For people who have been awake for many, many years or decades now will tell you wholeheartedly that there is such a thing as junk conspiracy. Junk conspiracy is a tactic that is deployed by the, the bad guys in order to distract, confuse, and make us all look like idiots. They get our heads focused and distracted on something that is not real that puts us into the junk conspiracy cul-de-sac with no way out while we slowly start to lose track with reality. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. As always, such a very, very, very big thank you to all of my patrons and my producers here on Esoteric Atlanta. Without you guys, this channel simply would not exist. You are the original sponsors of this channel and my heart always goes out to you guys. I thank you so, so, so much. If you would like to join our Patreon or our producer community, there is a link down in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce and today we are gonna be talking about the conspiracy that birds aren't real. If you've been on this channel for a while, you know that I myself am very woo-woo. Um, I have a lot of very strange beliefs. Well, well, strange to maybe the mainstream world. I definitely believe in spirits. I definitely see spirits, angels, demons, magic, all the stuff that a normie might not subscribe to. However, I'm also, as, as, as woo-woo and as mystical as I can be as a person, I'm also a very, very grounded person. I'm so grateful for my 17 years of an intense yoga practice to help me come into this great awakening with more of um uh, with with steady feet on the ground and yes there have been some junk conspiracies that i myself have fallen for but i'm very grateful that i was able to at some point have some self-reflection and self-awareness to realize when i was being played for a fool in fact it was mark twain who said it is easier to fool someone then convince them they have been fooled. As we come closer and closer to the precipice of change into fourth density positive, more and more and more junk conspiracy is being pushed out over YouTube, mainstream media, and all the other social media platforms. It's pretty easy to see at this point what is junk and what is not. In reality, the biggest awakening is seeing the illusion of yourself. In fact, that's the only awakening that you really need. It doesn't actually matter what you know that's going to allow you to ascend. It only matters the work that you've done on yourself. We see people going in tailspins trying to figure out who's really a man and who's really a woman when half of the videos made about these people aren't even true. We see the conspiracy that people's loved ones are going to be brought back from the dead, which frankly, my friends, is black magic. Why? Because each individual person has a soul contract with God. And trust me, your body is not going to die until it is time, until that contract is up. So when your loved one does pass away, their soul immediately leaves the body and moves on to its next experience. To try to bring that human back is playing with fire. 
and frankly slapping God across the face as if God doesn't know what he's doing. You also have to understand that because the soul immediately leaves the body, when you bring a body back to life, you're bringing back an empty vessel. What do spirits, especially dark, demented spirits need? They need empty vessels. This, my friend, is a zombie apocalypse. So while everybody's so focused on these junk conspiracies, spinning themselves in circles, waiting for somebody else to rescue them, waiting for somebody to save them, to, to somebody else to cure their pain, the rest of us are over here actually trying to do our own work. This is why the Cassiopeians say that only 3% of the population is actually going to survive this. And as we go down this road, I'm beginning to think that there are more normies that are going to ascend than truthers. In the last few months, I've seen more cruelty, more dishonesty, and more violence coming from the truther community than I have ever seen coming from the normies. And this is of great concern for me. When I first got on YouTube, this was a very loving community. And I do believe that those tender hearts are still out there. I think, though, that a lot of these tender hearts have fallen for the tactics of the bad guys, the controllers, once again. They've fallen under the hypnosis of junk conspiracy once again. We see so many people in this movement who stopped watching CNN, NBC, MSNBC, ABC, BBC, and instead of self-reflecting as to how they got hooked on these programs to begin with, they just switched to a YouTuber. And now they're being hypnotized by YouTubers. Nothing has changed. Again, it's not the EDO. It's not what you know that allows you to ascend. It's rather how you work on yourself. It's rather the healing of your soul. It's rather the understanding of who you are as a soul that allows you to ascend. It's deciding whether you want a life of serving humanity, being kind, being loving, not lying to people, or a life of sabotaging people, being selfish. I want to remind you that if there is a military operation out there that's being run by the White Hats, the White Hats are not going to lie to you. They're not going to hurt you. They're not going to cause fires that destroy land and lives, lives of innocent animals and potentially innocent people. The White Hats are not going to be that abusive partner that beats you down and tells you, I only did that because you needed it. This is another reason why Catherine Edwards and I and many other people on YouTube are trying to really talk to you guys about narcissistic abuse because we see that narcissistic abuse coming from these fake truthers along with junk conspiracy. I as a human being don't want to see anybody stuck on that hamster wheel of junk conspiracy. I as a human being don't want to see anybody being duped thinking that the that the ben benevolent beings are the ones abusing them because that's not benevolent. So I thought a good example to really explain junk conspiracy is the conspiracy birds aren't real. Now it's funny because I've seen a lot of people in this community really believe that birds aren't real is a genuine thing. It's not. But I think it's pretty genius, to be honest with you. Because the kid who created this conspiracy was so detailed in the conspiracy that you can see how people would fall for it. And when you see how genius this fake conspiracy is, how it was created, then perhaps it makes you go back and reevaluate other conspiracies that perhaps you've fallen for. I think birds aren't real is a great self-reflection tool. So let's get into it. What are birds aren't real? Well, birds aren't real. It's very simply, it's this conspiracy that the United States government back in the 70s started to basically commit genocide on a bunch of birds. And they were slowly over time going to replace birds with flying drones to spy on the American people. Now, when I first started looking up birds aren't real, I really was going to present it as junk conspiracy. And I didn't realize at the time, though, that from the very beginning, this was set up as a satire, that this was never a real thing. It was always a satire. And as I was doing my research and I was watching these documentaries about birds aren't real, I was sitting here thinking, you got to be fucking kidding me. Then I realized it was a satire and I was like, oh, OK, that's what's going on. 
Birds Aren't Real was created in 2017 by a kid named Peter McIndoe. Peter McIndoe was a student at the University of Arkansas, and he, as most of us around 2016, 2017, started to notice our world was coming into a lot of friction, a lot of upheaval. As a young college student, in some of the interviews Peter gave, he, he was watching the radicalization of both sides of the political spectrum. And that is true. Both sides of the political spectrum right now are being radicalized. We see it on the left and we also see it in the truther community, huge radicals. And so as Peter was watching out of his dorm room, these protests, counter protests, protests, counter protests, he decided that he was going to make a sign that was completely ridiculous. So he made a sign, he wrote down on a piece of paper, birds aren't real. And thus the satire was born. At this point, there's even a website called Birds Aren't Real. And I'm going to go through just briefly what this website says about this conspiracy, just to show you the amount of detail that Peter went into to create this junk conspiracy. He says that birds stand for bureaucrat intelligence reconnaissance drones. He claims on the website the, that the official party birds aren't real, kind of like the Flat Earthers or, you know, the military back channel had a start date in 1976. And again, this was in reaction and retaliation to the idea that people in, in this time period, 1976 was before I was born, so I was not around in 1976, but they started noticing that there was a decline in the bird population, and they started to point their fingers at the United States government. Now, this is very easy to do in the 1970s. We also see the hippie revolution happening, which in my opinion, the hippie revolution was an actual psyop that was going on, but we had, you know, I'm working on a case right now. I'm working on a story right now to talk about treason and espionage in the Cold War, and so we're coming from... World War One, World War Two, the Cold War, you know, the, this communist scare, all these things have been building up generation after generation after generation. So it was very clever of Peter to slide this right into this time period to sell this conspiracy. So to understand how this conspiracy took off with Peter's timeline, we have to go back to the three letter agency, which was started in 1947. It was founded in 1947 as an institution that could spy on the American people. And they sold this, they sold this idea that Big Brother is watching you, spying is good, because once again, we had the Cold War looming. We had this threat of communism. And don't get me wrong, my friends, yes, of course, communism is absolutely a threat but being a clever bad guy they decided that we're going to use the fear that the people have of this governmental soviet union all that kind of stuff and create an agency to assure the people that we were going to keep them safe while spying on them in 1953 alan dulles became the first quote-unquote civilian director of the three letter agency and he's the one that is responsible for really amping up the surveillance now i want to quickly just show you wikipedia's page of alan dulles now um this is what makes this conspiracy believable because this is actually factually he was the first civilian uh director that was head of the three letter agency. Um, he was during the Cold War, Cold War. He did serve under Eisenhower and Kennedy, which we're gonna get into. And so, and perhaps he did amp up surveillance, but that doesn't mean that birds are real, aren't real is a real thing. So let's go ahead. So we have 1953, we have Alan Dulles coming in to the three letter agency to be the director. He bumps up security, putting CCTV cameras everywhere. And on top of that, as it goes, the workers in DC were really pissed that the birds were like pooping on their car. Like who doesn't get mad when they've got a clean car and all of a sudden there's bird shit on it. Like I get that. And so, so Dulles in his 
you know, sinister, malevolent way, decided that he, because he needed to amp up the spying on the American people and he wanted to get rid of the bird problem in D.C., that he was going to devise this operation where the American government was going to go in and slowly kill off all of the birds and then replace the birds with flying drones. So in 1956, the conspiracy goes that Dulles met with then-President Eisenhower. Eisenhower allegedly approved this and said go figure out how to do it Dulles let's see how many birds we can take out and then according to the birds aren't real website Dulles then flew to an undisclosed location and met with a select inner circle of secret people to develop the next step in this operation this operation according to the website would end up taking out 12 million birds between 1959 and 1971 replacing all these birds with yep again flying drones in order to take care of this project dulles was told to reallocate 65 billion dollars of public health funds in order to force the extinction of birds. So $65 billion in the 1950s in order, you see how this conspiracy starts to take off? His next step was to meet with the head of the Boeing airplane company based out of Seattle. Through the Boeing airplane company, the website says that Dulles ordered 120 B-52 bomber planes. He then decided that he was gonna use Nevada's mysterious area 51 which again this is how the conspiracy takes off because we know that area 51 is quite nefarious and has been used for top secret stuff for a very long time you see how this works my friends they take they take a little bit of truth and they mesh it with the lie in order to make us look like dumbasses okay so the the, the website goes on to say dulles is like we're going to use area 51 he hired 23 men from the boeing airplane company to come all the way to area 51 to create Create these specific airplanes. Now, it goes on to say that all the men hired were single men who had no family because like any good conspiracy, you probably right, foreshadowing here, like they're going to get rid of these guys, right? After they're done doing what they're doing. And how do we know this? Because Peter McIndoe was, is a clever kid. He claimed that in 1994 in the conspiracy that a man by the name of Neil Ford, who was hired by Dulles to go to Area 51 to make these planes, ended up like not going. And so he realized when his buddies didn't come back what was going on. So now he is considered a whistleblower for the fake conspiracy. The conspiracy goes on to say that these men worked for two years at Area 51 to complete all these special airplanes. They called these airplanes the B-52Bs for birds. In these 120 airplanes, there was a 450-gallon tank for water where it, they usually have the bombers, but they put water instead. But it wasn't really water, it was bird poison. They also put a tracking technology in the tip, the beak, pun intended, no pun intended, the beak of the airplane so that they could track birds from like 200 miles away. So if you can imagine, here's another truth they're putting into the conspiracy. They sent the airplanes up and allowed them to spray the poison out into the universe to kill the birds. Now, how did they get rid of all of these 22 men since one of them allegedly didn't make it? Well, once they were finished with the project, they sent them to the front lines of Vietnam. And none of them survived. On June 2nd, 1959, Operation Water the Country was created. By this point, President Kennedy was in office, and according to the website, President Kennedy had no idea this was going on. Just like Eisenhower did have an idea, Kennedy did not. They told the people flying the airplanes that they were literally going to be watering the countryside to make the crops grow. The people flying the airplane had no idea what they were doing was actually 
killing a bunch of birds. Kennedy apparently found out by uh, listening in on a phone call because according to the website, he thought somebody was stealing his lunch sandwich. And so he wanted to catch him in the act to be like, I got you, you stole my sandwich. When he literally overheard them discussing this operation to take out the birds so they could put drum drones in the sky. The website goes on to say that President Kennedy was not too fond of this idea of them spying on the American people through fake birds and called Dulles into his office. When Dulles and some of his comrades explained to Kennedy why they were doing it, Kennedy apparently relented and said, okay, keep going. But then not too long after, Kennedy himself was assassinated. The website Birds Aren't Real goes on to claim that there are more whistleblowers who have since obviously come out as actors and also tries to show you faked um, leaked documentation from the three-letter agency. But yes, this is all satire. None of this is real. Was Dulles the head of the three-letter agency? Yeah, of course he was. Was it the three-letter agency created to spy on Americans? Of course, we know that now. Was there shady stuff happening during Eisenhower and Kennedy's time? Absolutely. But birds aren't real as an example of junk conspiracy. And I'm hoping as you guys watching this, and I know everybody watching this, you're all very clever people. I have some of the best audience out there on YouTube, but I'm hoping that this will be a really good example to really help people start self-reflecting. We know it's a crazy world out there. We know there's a lot of things that have been happening that aren't cool. We know that there's a lot of lies, a lot of mind control, a lot of hypnosis, but that doesn't mean that every single conspiracy that comes to you is real. In in fact, as I've said many times before, the controllers are many things, but stupid ain't one of them. I have said many times that the truth or community is being controlled by the controllers, just like the normies are. It's up to each and individual person to do their own work, to not give their power over, to understand that information is going to come and go. Do what you can to protect the children. Do what you can to try to, to right the wrongs of your community. But also understand that this is a personal ascension. No one can ascend for you. And you ascend by working on yourself, by understanding your own illusion, the own junk conspiracy that you have about you, instead of falling for these dangerous narratives that are not even true. There are people who are on YouTube that are being paid by that same three-letter agency to put out false hope to make you believe that the white hats are in control wink wink no they're not there are people being paid by this agency to make you think that the bad guys are gone no they're not they'll be here until the bitter end with us and when the time comes for ascension we can't cry to our maker and be like but i didn't know i was duped what our maker will say is, well, you had an opportunity to do your own work, to self-reflect, to get off of YouTube, to go outside, take a walk, to figure out how you can serve humanity. Serving humanity isn't sitting behind a computer screen, calling people names and getting super invested into conspiracies that, that don't affect you. Helping humanity isn't talking about whether Bill Gates has a penis or not. That's gossip. That's low vibrational gossip. Helping humanity is first taking care of yourself, making sure that you're getting exercise every day, that you're breathing fresh air every single day, that you're eating the proper foods, that you're starting to go more plant-based to get the nutrients that you need, that you're getting enough sleep so that when you go out into the world, you can be the best version of you. Serving humanity is when you see the friction getting more intense, stepping out and say, what can I do to help? What can I do to make sure my neighbor has food? What can I do to make sure my neighbor who is suffering right now knows that they are loved? Helping humanity isn't judging the normies. Because when you judge the normies, all you really do is judge yourself. Helping humanity is being open to understanding where you have been brainwashed, where you have been hypnotized. And then turning around and working on yourself and being compassionate for the mistakes you've made. And then course correcting. So I really, really hope that you guys will take this time to look up the birds aren't. It's quite comical, actually. Actually, watching Peter the kid do some interviews. There's some, there's some interviews where he he breaks character, and it's cut quite funny. Um, but I really hope you guys will look into this more and realize 
if a kid from Arkansas can fool a bunch of people by creating a junk conspiracy that he's been very open about is junk conspiracy, is satire, but he's still fooling people into thinking it's real, then imagine what other junk conspiracies are out there that you're believing. So at the end of the day, if you want to ascend, if you want to make it through this mess, work on yourself. I have a free, I created a free 30 day and 60 day shadow work challenge. I did that. You, you can ask me for it again. I'll send it to you. Start working. W listen, start enjoying your life. Start eating foods that are good for you, that are healthy for you, that serve you. Start being there for your loved ones, not just your loved ones who are awake, but to your loved ones who aren't awake. Because honestly, I'm telling you something in the truth community, people think they're so awake, awake, and they're some of the most asleep people you'll ever see. Be humble. Understand we're here to learn and grow. And stop putting energy into these stupid conspiracies that do nothing to serve you, but do everything to take power away from you. Because that's all junk conspiracies are, my friends. They're a tool to distract you so that your power, once again, can be taken from you. And I don't want to see any of you, any of you powerless. Truly, I, my prayer, my hope is that each and every person watching this claims their sovereignty back, stops falling for this stupid shit and really starts to work on themselves because you deserve that. You deserve to know how special you are. You don't deserve to be tricked. And the only person that can stop you from being tricked is you. And that my hope and my prayer to all of you watching is that you realize why they put out junk conspiracy. You realize that it's a way to get you to surrender your power to the new world order. You realize that so that you can say no. So you can say you don't consent. And you can just turn around and work on yourself. If someone comes to you and said, hey, have you heard birds aren't real? Just say Yes, I have heard that. Interesting. And then change the subject and go work on yourself. Or if you want, you can say, you know, that's actually satire. You should check out the website. All right, you go, guys. I hope that was enlightening. I hope that was interesting. I literally, I really recommend Googling this on YouTube and watching some of the satire documentaries and interviews because it's quite comical. And it does give you a pretty, a pretty good reflection on some of the other silly conspiracies they've put out there that might not be real. For example, do we know for sure that all these people are actually alive? I don't think so. Some of them might be, but again, how does Michael Jackson being alive affect you and your, your journey and your spiritual journey? It doesn't. It's just, a, it's just a distraction. The only person that affects is Michael Jackson. So put it down, guys, and just work on yourself because you're just as cool as Michael Jackson. You're just as cool as JFK Jr. And you're just as cool as, and as valuable as Princess Diana. And if they're not alive, they're not alive. It just meant that their time in this experience was over, and that's okay. That was God's plan with them. If they are alive, cool. It's their, it's their journey to make, not yours. Work on you. Get to know you. Has anybody ever told you that you're just as cool, if not cooler, than Princess Diana. Because if no one's ever told you that, I'm telling you that right now. You're just as cool, if not cooler, than John John. You're just as cool, if not cooler, than Michael Jackson or Freddie Mercury. You are just as special as they are. So why focus so much on their journey as a soul? Focus on you. Get to know you. Because you are just as special as they are. All right, you guys, let me know if you have any questions down in the comments section below. If there's other junk conspiracies you know of that you want me to cover, let me know, and I will talk to you all soon. Bye, everybody.